Yanımdaysa gecenin yıldızı var biliyorsunuz. Kendisini uzun süredir meraklı bekliyorduk. Bizler için inanılmaz bir performans sergileyeceğini düşünüyorum. Mika, welcome to Turkey. Hi. How are you? Thank you? I'm very well. It's your first time here. Yeah, it is my first time. I spent the whole day just kind of walking around the city and oh. playing backgammon for about four hours, losing every single game. <laughs> so, what did you notice about Istanbul the first? I think it's it's like a I don't know it it reminds me of I don't like it's like a storybook really. You know, all the old mosques, the skyline. The, nice description. It's, it's really amazing. I've had a great time. You said that you're bringing a carnival for us. Can you? Well, you know what I I, I did. I said I was going to bring my own little carnival, and I am. But actually, this is kind of the perfect festival for me because it is a carnival. Like there's rides, there's like this whole weird atmosphere. It's really cool. I've never. It's it's kind of. I'm always nervous when I come to a place for the first time because I don't know what the audience is going to be like, and so it's a little bit unnerving. But we'll see. What are they going to be like? Um. They're gonna be like uh, clapping hands, jumping around, screaming and yelling. So you'll be fine. And you? And I'll be on the front row also. <laughs> so uh, you you were born in uh, Beirut and raised in Paris and London. So pretty much you've seen the both, east and the west. Yeah. So um, which one do you feel closer to? And did you get any influence by Eastern culture? I've, well, you walk into my house and it's a Lebanese house. Although my father is American, my mother is Lebanese completely, and you walk in and there's always food. It smells like a Lebanese house. It looks like a Lebanese house, and I definitely have. I think that in my family life and in my personal life, it's definitely a Lebanese kind of way of life. Musically, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I grew up listening to some Lebanese artists like, you know, Feruz and Umkal Sum, who's not Lebanese, but Feruz is Lebanese. But um, and there's you know some great artists now like Mashda Rumi or Elisa and all these people, but. I don't know if it's found its way into my music. Maybe in the future it will, but I'm not sure. One day you just pop up and came to our lives, and now we feel like we know you for years and years. Really? So how did? I'm you... Sorry. I'm like, a, I'm, like a, I'm like the crazy cousin that, that no one knows exists. Someday I, I pop out of the asylum and then I never leave. <laughs> I'm sure you were hoping for this success, but uh, were you uh, expecting it, or is it a surprise? Was I? Well, look. Look, I I was. It's weird. I had these kind of. I always had these kind of delusions of grandeur, you know, in my head when I was a kid. I was always because it was. I wrote music to get me through school. I hated school. I had a very hard time. I was very bullied. Um, I was expelled from school once, and um, so for me, music was like a refuge. So I always said, one day I'm going to make this. One day I'm going to do this. But then when it actually happened, I was so surprised. And um, I guess. I make weird music, you know. I make I make pop music, and it has melodies. But at the same time, it's like crazy fairy tales with like talk about, you know, like just strange characters. But somehow, it's worked, and I know how lucky I am. I'm so lucky to be able to do what I love in in, in music in the style that I love, and still be able to do well. It's it's an it's a very much a privilege, and for that I'm lucky. Your music is. Kind of amazing. I mean, I felt like I have to dance. There's no other way. I have to make fun of it. I have to jump. I have to have fun. Where do you find this energy, and where did it come from? I don't know. I think my music talks about outsiders. It talks about freaks. It talks about it talks about all the crap things in life. Like most of my songs, will actually have lyrics that are very twisted and dark. But you know, I put it in a context where it sounds euphoric and it sounds joyful. So you have this contrast between the light and the dark. And that's why it actually makes you feel better about things. You know, it doesn't talk about money. It doesn't talk about bling. It doesn't talk about cars or lifestyles. It, it talks about just normal things. You know. It seems 
to me like uh, your kind of person never cries and always makes fun of about everything. And even if there is something sad, um, maybe you'll find something in it to make yourself happy. <laughs> kind of like a madman. <laughs> yeah. <No>. Well, <laughs> yeah, I am slightly mad. <laughs> See, the thing, I think I'm completely normal. My friends swear that I should be sanctioned and put into a, a, a hospital. <laughs> I don't know. I do see the kind of... I, I love absurd situations. I love, even in something that's very sad, finding the funny side of it. To me, it's like a defense mechanism. It's, it's the way that I get through things, you know? Um, I could be at a funeral and I could... I could be looking at, at, <laughs> at, at someone's behavior and, and I'll... I have to stop myself, but but it's not because I'm making fun of life, and it's not because I don't have respect for the things around me. It's almost because I respect it enough to kind of have fun with it. I don't know. I I have I have a uh, I have fun in my life. I think I'm doing what I like, and that has enabled me to have fun. And I'm I know that that's a privilege. So um, that's cool. Oh, thank you. I made it. Yeah, it's my design. Katy Perry likes it also. Oh, really? Yeah. I bet she asked you for it. Yeah. Did you say, get your hands off, bitch? <laughs> no, she didn't have said that. <laughs> so, um, what about your androgenic image? Oh, do you like it? Yeah, I like it. I'd wear it. I'm sorry. I, 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 I can't. No, I made it. It's special for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, what about your androgenic image? Oh, and, oh, uh, nice. Because. Um, do you think there is a distinct line between femininity and masculinity, or it's all complex now? Is it? It was always complex. <laughs> you only have to look back in in the in the history of this region to see how complex it was. I mean, uh, I don't I don't know. I mean, I I guess I I don't see the lines like other people do between what is masculine and what's feminine, both in the way that subject matter that I sing about or talk about or also the um, the, the way that I dress you know I, I just I guess to me it's not that clear and it doesn't have to be if anything it's much better for it not to be I don't know so I uh, overthink it you know once you said that um, I want to do something that you will hate me for uh, I'm gonna make songs and it's gonna just stick in your mind. You can never, you can love it or hate it, really? but you're gonna know it. So uh, that makes me think: Why do you make music? Just because of being liked or being popular or what? What's your main goal? If I think if I was making music just to be liked, I wouldn't make the kind of music that I make because well, my, my music it kind of instigates very polarized, you know, opposite reactions. Definitely not for being liked. I make music very selfishly. I make music because it helps me deal with life. I make, I, I, I guess it's just, it's kind of, you know, some people have babies, some people have families, some people paint, some people want to make money. Um, and I guess that I just turn towards making music because uh, money is great and it's great to be able to pay the bills and one of the advantages over the past few years is that now I can pay my bills. My electricity is not being switched off and <laughs> and believe me it had been in the past so that's amazing but there's nothing better than just feeling like you're achieving something by by making a piece of music so you released your new album actually it's not new it was last september the yes. boy who knew too much do you knew too much yeah i guess I, when i when i was younger i thought i knew a lot now i realize were you a dreamer big dreamer when you were a teenager oh, completely i was always the one in the class you know who thought i was better than the <laughs> no i mean i was just kind of like always daydreaming I don't know now I see that as an as a good thing but then again if I had a kid and he was always daydreaming I'd be really upset <laughs> so my last question uh, I know you've been touring so did you wrote any new songs or do you have to be at your studio and settle down for creativity I well no I've been I don't write when I'm on tour but I write when I go home and I've been I've already started writing my new album and it's very different to both the first and the second it's very very different actually um, but it's really exciting. I don't know, I can't describe it in any other way. There's something about it. I think if I keep on going, it could be the best thing I've ever done. Thank you so much, and I hope you'll enjoy every minute of your stay. Thank you. Can I have your glasses? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thank you.
Kendisiyle keyifli bir röportaj gerçekleştirdik. Bu akşam da sahne performansını izleyeceğiz. Thank you so much. <gülüyor> Yeah. 